So Nvidia made some crazy claims about their new RTX 50 series. Apparently the 5070 matches the 4090's frame rates, but of course there's a catch. Most of the performance gains that they talked about were AI generated frames and not native hardware rendered frames. So before you go and spend your money on these new cards, let's break down the difference between AI generated frames and raw performance. So traditional hardware rendering is like painting a full picture from scratch for every single frame. The game tells the graphics card exactly what to draw and then the GPU does all the work. That's including lighting, shadows, textures, and so on. So say you're running a game at 60 FPS, that's 60 complete pictures every second. It's detailed, but it's also a lot of work. Nvidia, the king of artificial intelligence, is using a technology that they call DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sample. It was first introduced with the RTX 20 series of cards. They're now on their fourth generation with DLSS 4.0. So with this generation, they introduced the multi-frame generation technology. But let's take a look at how frame generation in DLSS 3 work to understand how it works in DLSS 4.0. So DLSS 3 took an already rendered frame from the GPU and uses that to AI generate a new frame. Frame, effectively doubling your frame rate. With their new multi-frame generation technology, they can now generate up to three new frames, so your frame rate gets multiplied by four. If you're running a game at 60 FPS with multi-frame generation, your eyes will see 240 FPS. Because the AI is handling much of the work, your GPU doesn't have to work as hard. You can get higher frame rates or smoother visuals without sacrificing as much visual quality. But there is a trade-off. Notice how I said smoother visuals. If you go from 60 to 240 FPS using multi-frame generation, the game may look smoother, but it's still actually running at 60 FPS. You're not gaining extra information from the game engine itself. So the responsiveness or the latency is still tied to that original 60 frames per second. This doesn't mean that DLSS is bad. It's actually good. It's pretty nice technology. And I'm gonna touch on the new graphics cards and the charts Nvidia presented in a second. But first I wanna explain what situations this technology works best for. So if you wanna skip ahead, I'll have a timestamp below, but let's say you have a 4K or even an 8K monitor or a television but you can't run your games natively at that resolution without blowing up your PC. Like your PC just can't run it at that resolution. If you toggle DLSS on, you can run the game at 1080p or 1440p, whatever your computer can handle, and it will upscale that resolution using AI in real time to present it to you in 4K or in 8K. Or you can use it to lighten the load on your computer by running your game at a lower resolution so you can toggle on other graphic settings like higher texture or lighting quality. All right, so let's use some of Nvidia's own charts to explain why the native performance jump isn't as significant as they're marketing it to be from the 40 to the 50 series that is. First of all, not every game supports DLSS technology, so that's a prerequisite right there. Make sure that the game you're playing supports it if you wanna take advantage of this. But if we look at the performance chart Nvidia has comparing the 5090 to the 4090 and read some of the fine print. So most games on here are running the OSS. If you look closely, they're running frame generation on the 40 series, but multi-frame generation, which is the four times mode on the 50 series. So they're generating one additional frame on the 4090, but generating three extra frames on the 5090. For starters, they're both generating frames, but Nvidia only ran their new multi-frame generation technology on the 5090 and not the 4090. But if you look at Far Cry 6 all the way to the left here, this test didn't use any frame generation technology and it was rendering frames traditionally. This is still a decent performance jump from the 4090 to the 5090, but it isn't as a big of a jump as the other graphs here in this chart. So if you look to the right of that, a Plague Tale is running DLSS 3 on both the 4090 and the 5090, which is only generating one extra frame. There still is a performance jump, but again, it isn't as significant as the other games that are shown here. It seems like the future is getting further and further away from native gaming, especially with Nvidia at the front, but these cards do seem like a decent upgrade over last gen, and the prices have been lowered across all the cards except the, five, uh, the 5090. But I still recommend that you wait until people get their hands on these for testing before going out of your way to buy it yourself. It seems like the 5080 might be the better deal this year with the price cut, but $1,000 is still not cheap. 
by any means. And I wonder why they didn't give it more memory than the 4080. It did go from DDR6 to DDR7 memory, but it's still at 16 gigabytes. But the 5090 had a massive jump to 32 gigabytes of DDR7 from 24 gigabytes of DDR6 on the 4090 and a bandwidth of 1.8 terabytes per second. It seems like they're targeting professionals and people who need powerful workstations for their work with the 5090. I mean, the 5090 starts at 1999 now, which is so much money. So that's where things stand and where Jensen's claims about the 5070's performance being on par with the 4090's. The LSS4 and its new multi-frame generation technology can make your games look smooth. Just remember, you're adding AI created frames. You're not lowering the latency or boosting raw rendering power. And at two grand for the 5090, Nvidia is clearly aiming it at professionals and people who need serious like workstations. I mean, I own a 4090 and I won't be upgrading to the 5090, especially not for gaming. But meanwhile, the newly priced 4080, 4070 and 4070 Ti might be the sweet spot, even though a thousand dollars is still a lot of money for a graphics card. Assuming that um, the real world benchmarks back up Nvidia's claims. But again, I recommend that you would that you wait for, you know, uh, people to get it in their hands and start testing it. But yeah, if you found this breakdown helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to watch more and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.